Hello again. I'm in your YouTube and doing your Let's Playing. Um, Alright, so yeah. We're flying around doing some side quests. Let's meet uh, Griff's family. And of course, they're all disguised as humans. Um, which is, uh, according to the lore, it's the only way that they can speak the, uh, you know, the human language. Um, you know, griffins are highly intelligent, but the, they can't really communicate um, with the other races without uh, trans transforming. So that's why they do it. But these are all griffins. And I think I mentioned this before, but there's a part in Master of the Wind towards the end where Nova, as no you know, she's older because it's farther in the future, but Nova uh, calls up some griffins when the group needs quick transportation. And, you know, in isolation, just in Master of the Wind, it probably seems like, you know, I pulled that out of my butt. Yeah, well, she could summon griffins, what? But there was, as you can see, there was quite a uh, detailed uh, reason for why that was something that you could do. So, in general, I hope that um, people who have played Master of the Wind and uh, are watching these um, have kind of, I hope that, you know, the next time they play Master of the Wind or the next time they think about it or, or whatever, um, that a lot of the sort of offhand references to, um, to past events and, uh, you know, characters, you know, are a little, you know, richer because, you know, you've, you've seen this most of this game by now and before long we'll be done with it. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty much why I did it, just to, uh, to give that additional texture to uh, the world, and uh, yeah, because you know a lot of the more hardcore fans were demanding something like this. But anyway, um, and I'm glad to do it though. It's it's really been a good experience um, to see this game again, and uh, you know to sort of look at its connections to Master of the Wind and potentially to Legacy. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that I started this. But you know, still probably got like seven or eight more of these to do before we're done. Done. So, uh, shouldn't go and do my conclusion just yet. Um, so, like I said last time, well, to call the, any of these side quests is a bit of a, a stretch. I mean, it's mostly you fly to a certain point in the map, there's a cutscene, and it gets something cool. Um, so in this case, Nova's gotten a, a special staff, and, um, learned more about Chris's family, and they've given her another additional quest to go look for her father's shield, which is uh, in a different area we can check out and um, and look like all the secret weapons and stuff are totally worth getting like I I just kind of like went through the roof in terms of how powerful they are my my, uh, my college friends who play this couldn't believe how powerful these weapons were but you kind of need them because the end fights are hard I mean I mean H A D H jeez oh, can't spell H A R D hard um so yeah, he's making a joke because uh, they actually named Nova Nova, and Nova's parents named Griff Griff because he was a Griffin, highly original. So look at the staff; it's a huge mental boost, and obviously way better than any other staff she's used. And it hits every enemy on the screen. So finally, it's worthwhile for Nova to do like a straight up physical attack because she doesn't have the strength that the other three have, but. Um, it does really awesome damage to... Well, not awesome. It's, it's awesome to be able to hit everyone on the map. I mean, not too many weapons I can do that. This is an Earth spell. And now all the 7th and 8th level spell books have to be found on the map. Um, the, or you can find lower level ones too, but uh, you can also get those at the spell book shop that we'll see uh, some other time. But for now, we're going to meet with Ariana since Wire said that she was looking for us. She's sort of been uh, alone with her thoughts on this little island and um, preparing for the fight that's ahead. And this is, um, this scene's pretty heavy. I think it's because of the music. But, uh, and the, you know, the dialogue's heavy too, but I tend to always give credit for the music. I mean, what's that expression? Uh, the best weapon in any director's arsenal is a well placed song. Uh, that is. Very true. Extremely true. Um, so she's telling a story basically that a lot of Master of the Wind players saw because there was a sort of Easter egg um, in the game where you did see a uh, flashback with, with Queen Ariana 
and uh, and King Tear, who who's now dead, um, where you know the story that she's about to go into was uh, dramatized, and um, so but she feels a lot of guilt because you know they had a, a fight before he left and she never got to kind of make up with him, but you know they were together a long time. Um, you know it's not like. You know, when you're with somebody for a long time, you got a, a good relationship. I mean, you can have fights and they'll know that, you know, that you're not about to, like, <laughs> leave them for good. It's just a little fight. Um, but, you know, in addition to sort of worrying about, um, you know, whether she let him down, she also worries about her people. I mean, she's she leads the elves. And during her reign, I mean, the elven... Uh, Elven Kingdom just went to hell. It's a pile of rubble right now, and um, you know she couldn't uh, she couldn't stop it. I mean, but really, I mean nobody could have stopped it. You know, I mean that what Gallia did to them. I mean they just weren't even prepared. They just couldn't even comprehend the horrors that they were about to experience. Um, but she has a chance to um, to strike back to set things right. And she's one of the key members of the rebellion, so um, glad to have her around. And she's going to give a sword to Arius, sword of elven kings. Now you remember, Stoic also uh, got to use this in Master of the Wind. It's it's been a little uh, thing with these games, and uh, I uh, I think I'll put it in Legacy too. I'm not sure how that'll work, but uh, I got to bring it back. Um, and this sword is is pretty awesome, like you'd expect. Oh, that's right, I'm getting another goodie. Um, I'm getting a special uh, armor, custom-made or something, and it was designed to resist the shock uh, thing that you can get from certain moves, you know, like a stun move. And um, and that's important because, you know, Lysander has all of Arius's moves, including the dancing sword moves, which which do shock. So if you wear that, you're at, a, you're at an advantage when you fight him. And, uh, so that's pretty cool. And without it, I mean, he's even harder. I mean, he's tough, but, uh, this, uh, this gives us a bit of an advantage. Now, let's put that shit on. Yeah, look at that thing. Oh, huge attack jump. It hits twice, and there's a 25% chance of instant death on the enemies that you hit that with. Unless they're immune to instant death, of course. I mean, I don't want you taking out, like, the last bosses with one hit. That's not... <laughs> but, um, so that's a, another sick weapon. Alright, what else can we do? Eh, I'm just having the dragon dance to this music. This is, um, this is a song from Earthworm Jim. It's one of my favorite video game songs. And, uh, I just wanted it in the game somehow, and I was like, well, let's just make it the flying music. So here it is. Alright, there's nothing much to do around here. Um, but we gotta be on the lookout for places where you can pick up, uh, those spell books. I believe this one... Yeah, this one will teach you Lava Burst, which Galar already has. So I should save it for some of the, like, secondary, uh, characters. Um, alright, so I think the friggin' other thing with Nova is around here somewhere. Um, blah, 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 blah. Well, probably something over here. Let's check this out. What do we got? Oh, alright, well, that's fine. How about over here? This looks... This oh! Skeletons? Ah, let's leave them alone. They suffered enough. Eh, no, that's near. Just decoration. Alright, yeah, there it is, right here. Um, I think you can actually go here uh, early, it's just nobody would be there. But uh, for now, we can go in here and look at that, it's Nova Sisters. And uh, she's got two little sisters. Um, one is sort of a kind of older teenager. She's uh, pretty mature. And um, one's, you know, six or so. And. Uh, so it's funny they uh, they they Griff gave them a ride, and then Arya's notes that you know they walked across the whole damn world without any ride from no Griffins. But um, you know I guess doing it the way they did made him made him stronger. And uh, so there's this I remember this is a pretty long thing too, uh, you know because Nova basically left those two to fend for themselves. Um, you know she trusted Brenda to uh, to take care of the little one and, and keep things in order. But um, it's a pretty heavy responsibility for a teenager, and um, you know Nova would like to come home and 
Um, I think she says at some point in this in this bit. Uh, <laughs> she's cute. Oh, jeez, it's too cute. I'm like freaking out right now about how cute that is. Um, but you know, she has doesn't have much memories of of her parents because she's so young. Um, all right, so let's go and get. Uh, right, the shield is in this little pool of water, and uh, you can pull it out. And I can't remember what it does. Uh, I'll have to. I mean, it'll show me once we equip it. I can't exactly remember um, what its what its thing was, aside from being just a good shield. Um, but then she says, yeah, she says she doesn't ever want to fight again. She wants to give up it, give it up once once Gally is gone. And uh, there's always been a sort of unspoken question about whether he would stay in Gallia, but uh, he doesn't want to. Um, you know, it's too many bad memories. And uh, <laughs> Turnus can't have any sincerity. He, uh, <laughs> oh, he has to hijack conversation anytime there's sincerity. He can't deal. But Galdar uh, takes some air out of him, like usual. Um, okay, what we got here? Put that thing out. Up oh, friends, chaos, silence, and berserk, all of which are pretty debilitating uh, status effects. So that's that's pretty handy. Um, all right, so let's go fly around. All right, and this is uh, another. This is Galdar's old house, or his grandfather's house, and uh, it's you know kind of been in decay since uh, since they left. But now we're gonna get. Uh, the axe of Arius, the original Arius. Yeah, and uh, this is probably the sickest weapon in the game. Uh, you'll see what it does when we equip it. But um, you know, Galdar. I, I mean, I'm, I like this scene. I mean, I like all these uh, these character scenes that you get when you do this this wandering. But this is one of my favorites, just because it's it's kind of you know, Galdar's not prone to hyperbole or um, or exaggeration, but you know, despite his uh, his kind of uh, graceful, dignified way of, of speaking, you know, it still comes through like how emotional this is for him. And uh, you know, I like that. I mean, I just you know, I was pretty happy with how this came out. And um, so you know, he's been waiting to use his axe for a long time. But when he couldn't defeat Thies, uh that day, he just figured he wouldn't would never be worthy of it. And um, but you know. A lot's happened since then. I mean, he's become one of the major figures in the uh, in the fight against Gallia. And uh, now, you know, if you're not going to use it now, you know, when are you? So it's time to take it and uh, throw that thing on there. Let's do this. Yeah, there we go. Axe of Arius. Huge defense boost, 75% chance critical hit. So basically, you know, God is going to do regular attacks for the rest of the game. <laughs> Alright, we'll do some more next time. Peace.